first thing I will explain. Then secondly, I will explain certain facts that my client wants to put across to the public and the world. Then thirdly, I will give my client his reaction to what comes out of the documentary, the four episodes in the Al Jazeera process. So those three things. First, it is permitted by the law of any country that a person can act through their lawyer. It's a very established process. Lawyers are trained exactly for that purpose. They act on behalf of people, and they don't only act in the courts of law, they act in and outside the courts. So it is perfectly permitted by established systems around the world that a person can send their lawyer to say what they would want to say. When the lawyer is coming and saying these things, the lawyer is merely speaking on behalf of their client. We are not defending each other here. I'm just here to say what my client is saying. That's number one. When I come to number two, there are certain facts that my client wants to be put across very clearly to the world. And then these are the things that will explain whatever we will explain. First and foremost, my client was appointed by the president of Zimbabwe as his ambassador at large. He is very humbled by that appointment and he has committed himself to executing his duties in that office to the best of his ability, honestly, sincerely, and in the interests of the country. Number two, my client wants it to be put right across on record that he has never, ever done anything on behalf of the president, no deals on behalf of the president, no activities on behalf of the president. His relationship with the president of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Idi Mnangagwa, is one of principal and agent, one of superior and subordinate, and he has that relationship. Thirdly, in that regard, my client wants to make it very clear that he has no relationship whatsoever with members of the president, his family. He only has a relationship with the president, which is a formal, professional relationship. He wants me to tell you that he has never met with the first lady. He actually has never met the first lady of Zimbabwe because his relationship is with the president. That must be clear. Then I want to read a passage here from my notes with my client, which we would want the whole world to, to understand. My client, who is Ambassador Hubert Angel, wants it known that he has not been, has never been, and will never be, be involved in any criminal activity whatsoever. More particularly, he would like it to be stated that he has not been involved in any form of gold dealing or gold smuggling, nor has he ever engaged in money laundering by whatever name it may be called. So the insinuations in the Al Jazeera documentary are wholly baseless. He also wants it known that in his work, immediately after his appointment, he went to do some work, and that work is within the first six months of his work, is when these issues that have come in the Al Jazeera documentary came about. Now I want to go to that uh, aspect, but this general aspect about the statement I have made, he has never been involved in any. He holds a diplomatic passport, yes, but at the same time he has a British passport. In all his work, he has used his British passport, so he travels around the world as an ordinary holder of a British passport. It is only in three instances where he has used his diplomatic passport to travel to three countries in Africa, that include Zambia and Kenya. Uh, those are the instances where he has done so. But otherwise, he is not carrying himself around the world as a diplomat. 
he uses that British passport. So he's not, then he has also declined to receive any payment from the Zimbabwean government. So he's not on a Zimbabwean pay. He is working for the interests of the country. I, we wish that to be right at the outset. Now we come to the third aspect, which is his involvement in the issues that have come out of the Al Jazeera process. Now I want that uh, to be clear, I will not be handing out the statements I'm reading from, these are just notes, we, so you have to rely on what we are saying. The position is this, as soon as my client was appointed, it was made known to the whole world that he would be the president's ambassador at large. There were several people in Europe and other parts of the world that wanted to do investment in the country with his facilitation. That is a fact. And then among those persons were people that were genuine and those that were not genuine. But he, he has facilitated these investment opportunities. Sometime in 2021, when the president was attending uh, COP26 in Scotland, there were a group of persons who now appear and feature in the Al Jazeera documentary who approached persons working with my client. My client has an office as an ambassador at large, so he has a team of people, a few people that are his assistants. So through one of his assistants, these people approached my client wanting to see the president and have an investment discussions with the president of Zimbabwe. These people were already in London and the president was attending COP26 in Scotland. When my client was approached by one of his teammates, he made the usual uh, ch uh, checks with his uh, subordinate to find out how much they knew of these people. He was advised by one of his, the person involved that they had been in touch with them for a period in excess of two years or whatever. They knew them very well. On that basis, my client then thought he could facilitate an interaction between those persons and the president. The rule of practice is that they were going to check what are called security checks. Who are they and so on. And these security checks are to be undertaken through the national intelligence framework of this country. So the intelligence framework of our country when we check. The intelligence advised my client that they had serious doubts about the persons, they had serious suspicions about the persons, and that it was not advisable right at that stage for those persons to meet the president. In fact, national intelligence discovered that those persons intended something very dangerous not just to the country but to the president, that their aim was at the president and whatever. So the position which was discussed, this interaction then led to what we are calling a classified national intelligence assignment, which meant that a decision was taken with the intelligence authorities that the, my client would play along. He would not cancel his interactions with these persons. He would meet them and meet them as if he was going to make arrangements for them to meet the president and for them to be able to do investments in Zimbabwe. So it was in the context of a national intelligence operation. Zimbabwe wanted to gain intelligence out of it, wanted to see how far its enemies could go and what their agendas were. And these were issues to do with that. That is the context. Now, I should emphasize at this stage that even as I'll give you a few more details in respect of that, that I explain what my client is saying in respect of what is coming out of the documentary, that ordinarily these things are not told to the world. These things are not told to the public. But because of the intensity of the Al Jazeera documentary and its implications on the integrity of the operations of governmental systems in this country, my client felt obliged that he has a moral obligation at least to give an indication of what was going on. So in terms of then playing along, 
we want to stress that my client says even as they were going to play along there was also an somewhat a p -p possibility that these persons were not what the intelligence thought they were so you would find that in some respects there would have been some element of doubt at some interactions as to are these people what we think they are and we are playing along or they are genuine so there will be actions by my client in the documentary which might not be consistent with the explanation that he was playing along and playing along and acting along this is the point that uh, we wish to make there was some element of doubt in some respects but largely and almost mainly the actions in the documentary are consistent <coughs> with a classified national intelligence operation which was meant to see how far they would go now what then happens so in that documentary all the things that are said no one was phoned i'll give that as an example so there was no call to the first lady for example there was no call to Henrietta Lushwaya. These were decoys that were put in an intelligence operation. So even the statements that you hear, they are not real. That's the explanation coming from my client. Uh, if you were to put it very boldly or mildly, uh, boldly but uh, in a mild way, they were acting alone. It's unfortunate that, according to the version we are putting, it's unfortunate that it is national security issues that are then played in the public because of the agenda of these people, which agenda then forces issues that ordinarily would not be put on the, on the table to be put on the table. So I have been sent to make that clear that what you see in the documentary is merely playing alone. There was never a time never according to my client where people were requested to pay money to see the president that is false it would have been part and parcel of a process there was never a time when the first lady was called to be able to say that they'll fly jets and so forth to carry cold or any time that a letter shire was formed every part of the process you see it is part of that aspect which comes in if there are a few instances that are not directly consistent with that, I've watched them, I've discussed them with my client to get an explanation as to what it said. It could simply be the manner in which the acting along was done. Now, I then want to conclude and say that I will read this uh, portion of uh, what is coming up. As part of a nefarious agenda to undermine the economic interests of Zimbabwe, including particularly putting the president in the light that is portrayed in the, in the documentary. These persons sought to use Ambassador Hubert Angel as a basis to then carry out that agenda. And the National <laughs> Intelligence Framework decided that they would play along to see how far it would go. They have already done that and sufficient information has been obtained as a result of that exercise and this belongs to the wealth of information that the national intelligence framework here has i have not been asked to get into the details but i've been given the authority to answer questions that you might want to ask in relation to issues coming out of the documentary but the final word that ought to be repeated is that what you see is not real. What you see is real acting, going along as part of a classified intelligence framework. You People ought to may realize that these are things that are difficult to understand because you don't live in the world of how national intelligence operations work. And the only person that can really seriously contradict that, anyone who operates in that world would understand what we are saying and would understand the difficulties that we have if we have to say it out. Ordinarily, we would have ignored that and leave it 
uh, to the processes <laughs> that are there. So I think I should make that very clear and make that clear as well. He has never worked for the president. There are no deals that are done between uh, the ambassador and the president or the president's family. <coughs> the president's family was never involved at any stage, and all the things associated with that coming out of the documentary are really acting alone. I would say that uh, I couldn't get um, in the belly expression for it, and you will forgive me for that. But Nishona, there is a, a, a saying that Wanyangiraya uh, Ona. <laughs> so this is what would explain. So Wanyangiraya Ona. Wanyangiraya Ona. <laughs> but this is the version that is coming from my client, which we thought we should put across to the public. He's totally, totally doing his work to the best of his ability. He's not involved in any corrupt activity of any sort. And he has never dealt with the movement of gold in any way, whether the formal or informal movement of gold. All what you see in the documentary in relation to him is playing along. And that the, all the conversations, I think I also listen to some of them. The voices that you hear there, clearly if you know the persons involved, they, they will not be their voices. <laughs> 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 that is all. I should thank you very much for, for the framework that we have put out. <coughs> I am the one who should say, yes, I started. Okay, thank you very much.